guys. Today we're going to be taking out our emergency hatches and covering them over with some sheet metal that we have left over from the windows. I am Victoria. And I'm Rory. And these are our two dogs, Misty and Kida. And we live in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. We are converting our 2004 Thomas bus, named Freedom 25, into our home on wheels so that we can get out, explore, adventure, and do more of the things we love. Because experiences are more sacred than materials. So our plan with the emergency hatches, we're going to um, remove this one and fully cover it up. Um, just because this is going to be my kind of office space, living room space here. And um, I know that when you're on a computer, if you have a lot of light hitting your computer, it's harder to see the screen. Um, so we don't really want to have a skylight in the living room um, just because we're going to have a TV here. We're going to have our computer here. It's just going to be a little bit too much light in here for what we want to use it for. Um, and then we're also going to remove the emergency hatch that's in the bedroom because we are going to have our bed right here and I don't want to be woken up at four in the morning um, in the summer because the sun's out um, that early. So we're going to remove this too just because um, we'll lose a lot of heat in the winter time if we do have um, a huge hatch here and we'll also have a lot of light in the morning which I like to sleep in so we're going to remove that. We are going to put a skylight in though. Um, we are going to have a bathtub right here. It'll be a five foot bathtub shower combo. And we're planning on putting in, I think right here, we're going to cut this out and we're going to do kind of like a, I think a curved, um, a curved skylight in the shower, which will help brighten up our bathroom because this window is really tinted for the bathroom. Um, it's not letting a lot of natural light into our bathroom. So I did want to add a skylight here. So I think it'll either be this one here or this one here. And then we are going to do a second skylight um, right here. We're going to have our utility closet. And then on the other side, there's going to be um, the fridge and pantry right here. So it's going to be kind of a narrow, dark hallway. Um, so we are thinking about also putting another skylight here instead of having it over there. So we'll have a skylight here and a skylight here in the bathroom. This is the sheet metal that we have left over from cutting out these windows. We're going to use them to cover the emergency hatches here. I'm going to show you this. This is really gross. This just literally like with one finger I can pop this stuff off of there. It's just not even not even on there anymore. It's just like so brittle. This is just like silicone or something like that. That you know, it's so easy to peel off. I mean, that could not possibly be waterproof. So I'm glad I'm taking these out because this is nasty. Ew. Ew is right. Yeah, those are easy to get out. Oh, those are little self-tapping screws. Cute. Maybe we could reuse these. Put them in my pocket. Reduce, recycle, reuse. <laughs> such a dork. I'm looking for a pry bar, but the shop's a mess. Because it's full of kitchen stuff and bathtubs and sinks. I don't know. Can you see a pry bar anywhere? There's a hammer. It's a huge drill bit. What's this for? Like, why does he even buy this stuff? Maybe it's in here. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. Uh, nope. There we go. That should work.
We're gonna have to scrape all this off because it's gross. Because we're gonna put some sheet metal on here to close it up. Because we're putting a skylight over there instead. But yeah, this is gross. But it's pretty easy to come off though. Getting off the gunk. What kind of gunk is up there? There's a spider. <laughs> this gunk. This black sealant. It's all clean now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get you to help more often. You're fast at stuff. <laughs> now I just play around with the camera all the time. <laughs> yeah, that stuff's gross. One of the, uh, what was the emergency hatch here. Victoria's got it cleaned up. Um, I'm gonna take a grinder to this with like a sanding disc and get all this extra crap off of there. But right now I'm also going to take a measurement. So I'm at where the emergency hatch used to be here. And I'm looking at, let's see if you can read that, 27 inches. Let's go 27 inches. And then the other way, um, I have these rivets here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of butt up against those rivets best I can. And looking at here, 26 and a half. So 26 and a half by 27. And I'm gonna cut two of them because this is the back one. And then you can see the front one up there. Just that black hole. I'm gonna patch both of them over. My apologies for the compressor in the background, but you're just gonna have to listen to me like this for right now. Uh, I've got a piece of metal that I cut out of one of the windows. Uh, and I measured out my 27 by 26 and a half for my patch and I kind of liked that rounded corner so what I did is I just grabbed my um, as you saw in my window video my piece of bristle board that I had cut that radius out of and uh, I'm just going to do that on all four corners so it keeps it nice and clean looking safety first folks the edges on this stuff and then head up with the grinder on the top of the bus and clean up all that stuff. Alright, now we're going to use some of the same stuff we used on the sheet metal on the outside. Put a big old line on it out here and then rivet it down.
you can see here we got polycarbonate sheets. These are, uh, this is two sheets just wrapped together. I got 24 inches by 18 inches. And then I also have some sheet metal screws here that are going to go into the polycarbonate, through the sheet metal on the roof, and into some of this hemlock that I also got from, uh, from a tiny house company that I was working for. They were removing shops and they just wanted to get rid of a bunch of their scraps, so I took a bunch of material from them. But I'm going to rip these down on the table saw and we're going to make frames out of these for the inside of the bus that's going to be some of the nice finish work actually inside the um, skylight. So these aren't going to be the same color. I'm going to sand it, uh, put these through my planer and take off the color off of here. All right, let's look at a little sketch of this. Kind of what my plan is and how I'm going to do it. So we know we have a skylight in the middle of the bus. We also know that the bus has this curve to it. So we can't just cut a square piece of, piece of this hemlock and think that we're going to push it up into the metal and flatten the metal. And we don't want to do that either because we want to have that rain coming down and shedding off, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a square piece like this. It's going to be a little bit bigger than what we need um, height wise. Also it's going to sit upright. Let's see if I can take this piece. You see this, this material here? It's going to sit upright just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to push that, not push it, but just bring it up to that sheet metal and then we're going to scribe that curve into our material. We're going to take that to the bandsaw and we're going to cut that off and then it should fit nice and snug to the top. That's also going to allow for the polycarbonate once it goes onto the sheet top of the bus. Once the polycarbonate goes onto the top of the bus and the wood is in the same radius as the top of the bus, then we're going to be able to put screws down through into that piece of wood to fasten it. And then from looking from above, bird's eye view, you've got the bus here running lengthways and then you have an opening cut in the bus. That's the skylight. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to imagine you can see through the top of the bus. Underneath will be your wooden frame right here. And then your polycarbonate sheet over top of the sheet metal on the top of the bus with screws all the way along into the wood underneath the sheet metal. That should create a nice seal. I was told by the company that we bought this from, you need a really sharp bit and it needs to cut really slow and even a little spray bottle of water can help just to uh, keep it from heating up because this bit's already hot so I think I'm going to need to get some water or something. Get our Timmy's cup, get the drill bit a little wet, cool it down.
Just make sure you pick the nice sides of your lumber to face inward so that when it's all done, see I don't want that facing inside the bus. I don't want to see that. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I don't have to fill it. And this side looks really good, so I make sure that that's facing in. So do that on all four sides. All of this looks really good. So we'll go ahead and put it together. I have 18 by 24 inch box on the outside, not the inside, because I want the polycarbonate to hang over the edges on the top so that I can get some screws through the polycarbonate on the, the very top of the bus. So I've grabbed these are three inch screws and a drill with a drill bit that is smaller than the screw itself so that I can put this together temporarily for now, get it up into place, and scrap it. Okay, I've got a couple of center lines marked up here. Now I'm basically just trying to get in place so that I can make a little bit of a scribe. So I've got my center lines. Line those up there. And then I'm going to use my head on this one. <laughs> Not the way you were thinking. Oh yeah, hold that. I think I'm going to scribe there. Let's see if you can see this. Alright. There, you can see the scribe there that I've made. Now we're going to try to cut that out. Okay, now that I've got this back together, uh, I'm following this curve and, and marking it onto the uh, piece that's beside, beside the cutout. And then I'm running it through my table saw. You can see that my, ang my uh, blade is on an angle and it's going to cut with that line there. So I'm going to do this on, all, on both sides here and then we're going to go and try to fit it. Alright, so now that we have our emergency hatches are deleted and we've covered them up, sealed them up, and we've built wooden frames for our skylights, and then traced those wooden frames out on the inside of the bus, and then you just saw me drilling holes from the inside of the bus to the outside, that's just so that I had all four corners up here on the roof. One here, one here, one here, one here. Line their square up with our holes that and make a mark. I found this tool is not a screwdriver, it looks like one, but it just has a uh, pointed tip on it. And it's really good to just scrub, make a really nice thin line in this metal so that I can follow it with the grinding disc.
I'm going to do all four sides. Maybe you guys can see that, maybe you can't. Got all four lines here, drawn out, and I'm ready to cut. So after I cut the holes out, there was some raw metal here. Uh, last night I put some paint on them, just to protect that, and also, the whole bus is going to be white, so I put white paint so that when we get the plexiglass on, you're going to see white under there and not yellow, or orange, whatever color this bus is. Next, I drilled some holes in the plexiglass, or polycarbonate is what we're using. Uh, these holes are bigger than the shank of the screw, so that there is some wiggle room there. You don't want them tight, they say that this stuff can crack if uh, the screw is trying to dig through there. So these holes are quite a bit bigger than the shank of the screw, but not bigger than the head. Then what I did was I lined it up where I wanted it, made some marks where I wanted it to sit, and grabbed a, uh, a marker and just stuck it in each hole to draw a little dot where I need to drill each hole in the sheet metal. So previously I built these frames out of some hemlock that I had that I milled down. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a curve to it. So I had to scribe out the shape of the bus. Uh, so this will fit perfectly in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fasten it with some screws, not glue yet. And then we're gonna go on the inside and we're gonna scribe the bottom half of it. So it works with all of our trim and sealing material. All right, and I've got Victoria here to help me. So that's the back. So it's gonna go this way. Okay, so I think you can see in here that this right now is too low compared to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my four foot level, use it as a straight edge, plane it across the, uh, the ceiling furring strips and make a mark where I need to cut that so I can cut the radius out of the bottom of it. cut the radius out of, you can see that now. We're gonna put a bunch of uh, construction adhesive, which we're using PL Premium. I find that it sticks really nicely to the steel. So we're just gonna goop it all on there as much as we possibly can, shove it up in place, and I'm gonna be up on the top putting screws in it, and we're gonna let it sit like that overnight. And then tomorrow I'll come and I'll put the polycarbonate on. All right, so I've peeled back a little bit of this and I've put my first screw in. As you can see, the silicone has squeezed out both sides. 
That's what you want to see. You want to see that full inch and a half with silicone in it. Now that I've got all the screws in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and tighten everything. And the important thing is that these are roofing screws, they have a little neoprene washer. Is that I get those just tight enough that I see that neoprene washer squish out a little bit. So I'm just going to go around and do that now. Okay, now that everything's tightened up, I'm going to take my finger and just I'm going to edge everything. So all this silicone that's sticking out, here let's see if I can get you a better shot of that. Because I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to smooth all that out and clean it up around the whole thing so that I have a seal that's lasting. You can see the, uh, the silicone there just oozing out. That stuff I'm just going to leave because it's not really smeared on anything right now. I'm going to leave it to dry and then I can cut it out later. You can see I used a nice hemlock piece up there which we're going to stain later on. But uh, it's, it's quite a simple project to do. Anybody can do it. And another thing was I only spent about 50 bucks on both of these skylights. So $25 a skylight. A lot of people are probably going to ask, well why didn't you go with like one of those marine hatches or something like that that opens up so you can get on your roof. Honestly I wanted simplicity. I didn't want things that could possibly leak and I'm sure the marine hatches are great and everything but they're running like $200 upwards for a one hatch. I spent 50 bucks on two hatches. And this is super easy to replace. I can get this polycarbonate almost anywhere and it's super cheap so if something goes wrong, breaks, cracks, whatever it may be, I can always just replace it and it's simple as go up on the roof, take out the screws, put some more silicone on the new piece and screw it back in. Done. If you guys have any questions at all, comments, concerns, anything, please don't hesitate to comment on this video or message us on Instagram, freedom25bus. And if you're not following us there, I would suggest you do. More up-to-date pictures and videos on there. Well, that wraps up our video on removing our emergency hatches, patching them up, and installing our skylights. As you can see behind me, I have my skylight over my kitchen area, the skylight over my bathroom area, and back there is uh, one of our old emergency hatches. So if you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, Subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos on how to build your schoolie. We hope that you follow along on our journey and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.